the schools and in the Hanafi school it's an obligation, it's wajib. And so after each fad salah we say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. And this remains according to the Hanafi school until Monday salat, Salatul Asr. So inshallah between now and Monday Salatul Asr we all remember to make the takbirah at least once after each prayer. And that these takbirahs represent the entire orientation of the believer is that whatever our state is, whatever our circumstances, whatever the difficulties we might be facing, Allahu Akbar. Allah is far greater. Alhamdulillah. Allah is far greater. La ilaha illallah. There is no deity but Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Wa lillahi alhamd. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in a hadith that Tirmidhi relates, after the dhikri la ilaha illallah. The best remembrance is la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. This is a day of celebration. It's also a day of tawbah, repentance. And perhaps uh, a repentance that all of us must partake in is not saying la ilaha illallah enough on our tongues, in our hearts. After the dhikri la ilaha illallah. Wa after the dua, alhamdulillah. The hadith continues. And the best supplication is alhamdulillah. Because irrespective of the particulars of our circumstances, Alhamdulillah reigns supreme. Alhamdulillah reigns true. Alhamdulillah is perennial, universal, timeless, eternal. All praise belongs to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And this is at the heart of our celebration is our, we celebrate Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We celebrate the Deen. قُلْ بِفَضِّ اللَّهُ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Say by the mercy of Allah, the, by the bounty of Allah Ta'ala and with the mercy of Allah Ta'ala فَبِذَلِكَ By that and that alone فَبِيَفْرَحُ Let them celebrate, let them rejoice in, in, in a group فَبِيَفْرَحُ يعني جمع Let them together celebrate and rejoice it's better than whatever the people of dunya might amass of their dunya. It's better than things. It's better than transient objects of this world or the fame that one might have among, in people's eyes or the, uh, how they're able to impress the reputation and whatnot and power struggles and all of these things. These are asbab in the world, but the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala is far superior than everything that people might amass of this world. And so celebrating Allah Azza wa Jal, celebrating the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, celebrating the Deen, this perfect, sublime, pristine way of living that has been revealed to us as a tremendous mercy. These days are days of optimism. Optimism is perhaps a lost sunnah of our communities. We need to revive and particularly for the young people that we have to always be optimistic. The Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a hadith, La tayarata. There's no such thing as superstition. But I love optimism. But I love optimism. And optimism is good, beautiful words. And what, what better kalima than la ilaha illallah? What better kalima than alhamdulillah? This is, the, this is the basis of our optimism. The more we engage in the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal in our tongues, on our tongues, in our hearts, the more our hearts will be filled with the light of optimism. It's only light that allows optimism. It's only life that allows optimism. We need to revive our hearts with the remembrance of Allah. The Prophet said وسلم, in the authentic hadith, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم, The example of the one that makes remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal compared to the one that does not make remembrance of Allah is like the example of the living and the dead. And so this is life for our hearts and therefore it's light for our hearts and when our hearts are alive and full of light then inshallah we can have tremendous optimism because our optimism is not in our own circumstance or our own means our optimism is in the creator of our circumstances and the creator of our means and he is far transcendent to be limited by any circumstance or to, or to be limited by any means that's why means, asbab, are often the great veil the human being himself as a sabab is a great veil my own identity is a veil. Allah Ta'ala, His tremendous fiat transcends all of that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we have to think beautifully of Allah Ta'ala. This is one of the fruits of Eid, is to, is to fill our hearts with this optimistic outlook rooted and predicated in the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Prophet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, coupled these two things together, optimism and the dhikr of Allah. In the authentic hadith, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, citing his Lord Azza wa Jal in the hadith Qudsi, أَنَا عِنْدَ الظَّنِّ عَبْدِي بِي وَأَنَا مَعَهُ إِذَا ذَكَرَنِي Subhanallah. Look at the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, expressed 
in the hadith of the Prophet I am in the opinion of my servant of me. If we think well of Allah, Allah will manifest far better than that. I am in the opinion of my servant of me. And I am with him when he makes remembrance of me. And so optimism coupled with the remembrance of Allah. And what better way of being optimistic than to realize based on the statement of the Sadiq and Mustuq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he only spoke the truth that Allah will be with us. Wa ana ma'ahu. What is this ma'iyah? What is this ma'iyah, this witness of Allah azza wa jal? It's something the mind cannot encompass. The mind, the intellect does not have, it's a tool that's used to discern good from evil and pursue the good, but it cannot contain what it means for Allah Ta'ala to be with a person. وَأَنَا مَعَهُ إِذَا ذَكَرَنِي And so these are days of dhikr. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walilah alhamd. And with that dhikr, and with that life, and with that light, comes the rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jal. The person of optimism in his Lord is a person that receives unique rahmah from Allah, unique mercy from Allah. It's, it's, it's something different than the general mercy that that permeates creation. Creation is permeated with the rahmah of Allah. Rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. My mercy encompasses every single thing. But there's a unique rahmah for the person who has a good opinion of Allah. There's a unique rahmah. Ibn Mas'ud, Allah be pleased with him, he used to say that when Allah Ta'ala wants to give a gift to a servant, He first places in the heart of the servant a good opinion of Allah. And then when the servant thinks well of Allah, then the gift comes because it has to do with optimism. This is why one of our early masters, the great Syrian master of the third century, Abu Suleyman al-Darani, rahimahullah, he says, man, man, man billah. Man billah. Whoever beautifies his opinion of Allah, فَقَدْ فَتَحَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بَعْضَ الرَّحْمَةِ And Allah has already opened the door of mercy to that person. Allah Ta'ala has already opened the door of mercy to that person. This is one of the secrets of the people that Allah loves, of the awliya of Allah Azza wa Jal is their tremendous optimism in Allah. This is one of the secrets of the Anbiya alayhi wa salam jami'an. And this is one of, the, one of the, the legacies that we remember on this day is the legacy of our patriarch and forefather Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam. He was a great prophet of optimism alayhi salatu salam. When he's being thrust into the fire alayhi salatu salam, at a young age, according to some of us sitting 16 years old, when he's being thrust into that fire, what's his outlook towards his Lord at that time. SubhanAllah, alayhi salatu salam. To the extent that Jibreel alayhi salam comes to offer assistance and he says, Amma anta fala. As for you, I don't need your help. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us and the best one to rely on. This is rooted in optimism. Allah is sufficient for us. He doesn't even make dua let alone ask something of creation as great as Hazrat Jibreel is alayhi salatu salam, not even turning to Jibreel. Immersed in the remembrance and the optimism in his Lord. And then what happens? The fire is made. Bardan was salaman ala Ibrahim. Cool and peaceful for Ibrahim. Our master Ibn Abbas said that the Prophet وسلم, was also in a similar maqam. And Allah Ta'ala Revealed الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسِ إِنَّ النَّاسِ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was also in, the, in a similar situation where the forces, the legions had gathered to harm the Muslims. فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا Their faith and optimism increased. وَقَالُوا And they said حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Allah is our sufficiency and the best one to rely on. Tawakkul is this salient virtue that's coupled with Tawheed in our tradition. Imam al-Ghazali in the Ihyan al-Muddin, as many of you know, he has a chapter called Kitab al-Tawheed wa tawakkul the book of affirming the oneness of Allah and reliance on Allah, because the two go together. The revelation of Islam is a revelation of monotheism, Tawheed. But the fruits of Tawheed in the lived experience of human beings that are uh, devoted to this Tawheed is Tawakkul is reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is not limited to Prophet ﷺ. The great saints of our Ummah, they all manifested tawakkul in their various moments. Perhaps one of the most salient examples in the time of the Sahaba is our Master Sayyidina Uthman anhu, that when he was treacherously killed by rebels in Medina Munawwara, the blessed city of Medina, and they cut off the supplies from going in, 
And Sayyidina Ali was guarding the house. Sayyidina Hassan was guarding the house. Sayyidina Hussein was guarding the house. And each one he told, go home, don't guard it. Go home, don't guard it. As Khalifa, he did not want to meet the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi having the blood, a drop of blood of anyone on his, of a single Muslim on his, on, on his hand. And so he wouldn't even allow the Sahaba who wanted to defend him from defending him radiallahu anhu. And then when they, when the murderers come in and they're about to do this catastrophic a catastrophe that to this day the, the, the calamities of that, of the, of the schisms affect our ummah. And he warned them, he warned them, if you kill me, the ummah will never be united like before. It'll, it'll give birth to a perennial sectarianism. But when they came, his wife, radiallahu anha, she says, in taqtuluhu wa tatrukuhu, if you dare to kill him or not, fa'alimu annahu kana yuhdi laylatan bi rak'atin yajma'u fi al-Qur'an. Realize that this man would keep the night alive in one rak'ah, he would recite the entire Qur'an. And that's what, that was his state at that time, reciting the Qur'an, radiallahu anhu. He was immersed in the dhikr of Allah, in the words of Allah, in the kalam of Allah, azza wa jal. And when they did that deed, the ayah that he was reciting, فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ Allah, فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ Allah, And Allah will suffice you against them. Those were his last blessed words, radiallahu anhu, when, when he was treacherously killed. Similar to Ibrahim alayhisam being thrown into the fire. And he tells Jibreel, أَمَا أَنْتَ فَلَا Sayyidina Uthman, he tells Hassan Hussein, أَمَا أَنْتُمْ فَلَا No, I don't need your help, I don't want your help. Sayyidina Ibrahim Salam says, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِيَمْ Our Master Uthman Radulahan says, فَسَيَكْفِيكَمْ Allah." The same meaning, tawakkul. Tawakkul. Reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal. What a, what a beautiful human being. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ These are meanings that are easy to speak about but very difficult to actualize. And that one of our great scholars of our tradition, Sheikh Mustafa al Arusi, he was the Sheikh of Azhar in the 19th century. He says, فاعلا مختارا لجميع الأشياء التي ينسبها المحجوبون إليها فيكل الأمر لمن له الأمر ويرضى به وكيلا He says Allah be pleased with him that realize that the person of tawakkul, the person of reliance on Allah is the individual who sees Allah Azza wa Jal in the forms of created means in the forms of created means فاعلا مختارا acting and having selected that eternally Azza wa Jal, having selected it eternally with the things that the people who are veiled ascribe to other things that things do things no, the people of Tawheed say Allah does everything Khaliqu kulli shay things are simply the loci, the places in creation where Allah manifests His fiat Azza, azza wa Jal Allah is the creator of every single thing فَيَكِرِ الْأَمْرِ لِمَنْ لَهُ الْأَمْرِ So he consigns the affair to the one who already owns the affair. وَيَرْضَى بِهِ وَكِيلًا And he is satisfied with him, Azza wa Jal, as his wakil. It's about satisfaction. It's about rida. Realizing that our breaths and all the events in each moment and each breath of our lives has been decreed by Azza wa Jal, by, by Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed it eternally. He's decreed it eternally, Azza wa Jal. And so to be content and to hand over, this is one of the secrets of Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, this beautiful dhikr of the Fatiha. Some of our ulama say all of the Fatiha is found in Alhamdulillah because it encapsulates all of these meanings. And at the essence, one of the meanings of Alhamdulillah is to be content with whatever our circumstances. Ajaban li amr al-mu'min, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how wondrous is the affair of the believer. Inna amrahu kullahu lahu khair. His entire affair is good. وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِيَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ And this is only true for the sincere believer, the one who has tawakkul and rida in Allah. إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُ السَّرَّاءَ شَكَرًا فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ When good times befall him, 
he is thankful. Alhamdulillah. And that's better for him. But in bad times afflict him. He is patient. Alhamdulillah. And that's better for him. And in the riwayah of the Musnad Imam Ahmad, which is also Sahih, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرٍ مُؤْمِنٍ لَا يَقْدِيَ اللَّهُ شَيْئًا إِلَّا كَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ SubhanAllah. How wondrous is the affair of the believer. Allah does not decree anything for him except that it's good for him. Allah does not decree anything for him except that it's good for him. And that's what our masters teach us. And that's what we have to revive. And that's the way we rejoice in these beautiful days. Imam al Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet, Hussein ibn, 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 Abdi, ibn, 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 ibn Abi Talib, Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhuma, one of, another great legend of our ummah, a great Imam of both the Sunnis and the Shias, an Imam that we all love as Muslims. It's not just part of the ummah that loves Sayyidina Hussein, in the, all of the ummah love Sayyidina Imam al Hussein, rahimahullah, radiallahu anhu. He taught these same meanings. He said, Rahimahullah, that Man i'tamada, Man i'tamada ala husni ikhtiyari lahi lahu. Whoever relies on the beautiful choice of Allah for him, whoever relies on the beautiful choice of Allah for him, Lam yatamanna ghayra makhtar Allahu lahu. He will not desire other than what Allah chose for him. He will not desire other than what Allah chose for him. And he's someone else also who manifested these meanings when he was treacherously killed. When he was treacherously killed, Ali Salam. He also turned to Allah in full tawakkul, in full rida, contentment with Allah. These are our great legends. These are the stories that we teach our young people. These are the people that we remember to revive our hearts and to rejoice so that we can re elevate our hearts to rejoice in the remembrance of Allah, in, in contentment with Allah, in gratitude to Allah, in reliance on Allah. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make these meanings permanent and fixed in our hearts. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us the people of the remembrance of Allah. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us the people who celebrate Allah and His oneness Azawajal in all of our days and our nights, in our good times and our bad times, in full contentment with Him Azawajal. Allahumma inna nasaluka tawfiq wa ikhlas wa dawam an ya'ma wa husn khitam. Allahumma inna nasaluka, Allahumma inna nasaluka, Allahumma Inna nasaluk al-afu al-afi al-ma'afa al-tamma fi al-dunya wa al-akhir wa li-kul muslim Allahumma a'afina jami'an Allahumma farraj a'anna wa'in muslimin fi kulli makan Allahumma farraj a'anna wa'in muslimin fi kulli makan Allahumma farraj a'anna wa'in muslimin fi kulli makan Rabbana a'atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hayyat lana min amrina rashada Rabbana a'atina fi al-dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina a'adab al-nar Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami'u al-alim wa tiba alayna innaka anta al-tawab al-rahim Allahumma farraj a'anna wa'in muslimin في كل مكان اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غرب الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من زوال نعمتك وتحول عافيتك وفجاءة نقمتك وجميع سخطك هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على ساداتنا الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن الحسن وعن الحسين وعن أمهما فاطمة الزهراء وعن أزواج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وعن الصحابة أجمعين والتابعين والتابعين بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد وأقيم الصلاة